In this project, we'll use a variable and a button to latch the entire LED strip on or off. Above the void setup, we want to include the LED strip.h library. We do that by typing hash, the word include, and then between quotation marks, the name of the library. Including a library gives this program access to special functions that make it easier to use our hardware. So for example, the LED strip library allows us to use strip.setpixel, .draw, and .clear that are specific to just using the LED strip. To complete the setup of the LED strip, we need to give it a name. I name mine strip because that's easy to remember and easy to type. And we need to complete this LED strip function. It has three arguments. The first is how many pixels are on the LED strip. The second is where on the maker board is the green wire of the LED strip plugged in. And the third is where on the maker board is the blue wire of the LED strip plugged in. Still above the void setup function, we're going to create a variable. This is an integer type variable shortened to int, and that means it's going to have whole number values, no decimal places, a name, so press count is the name of my variable, because that's easy for me to remember, and that's what that variable is going to tell us. How many times has the button been pressed? Then a single equal sign, and a value that the variable starts with, so zero. We have an integer variable named press count with a value of zero. Within the void setup function, use the pin mode function with arguments six and input pull up to set up a button that's plugged in on your maker board. Within the void loop function, the first thing we have is an if statement. The if statement has two main parts. Between the parentheses is a condition that's checked every time the if statement is run. This condition checks the reading from port 6, and if it's a low signal, then the code between the curly braces of this if statement will run. Because port 6 has a button plugged in and is set to input pull up, when the button is pressed down, the digital read of port 6 will equal low. If that's the case, then line 15 will run, and that's press count plus plus. That adds 1 to the value of the press count variable. So we set it equal to 0 initially, then press count plus plus makes it equal to 1. Next we have a delay function with an argument of 250. That will pause the program here for 250 milliseconds, or 1 quarter of a second, and allow you to release your finger from the button so you don't press down on the button and accidentally trigger multiple press counts. Next we have an if statement checking the value of the press count variable. If press count equals 1, the code between the curly braces of this if statement will run. The setPixel function has two arguments. The first determines which pixel or pixels you want to turn on. We're using strip.all as that argument because we want to turn on the entire LED strip. The second argument is a color value ranging from 0 to 299. We're using a value of 100, which is red. The strip.draw function sends that set pixel data out to the LED strip and displays it. The else statement will only run when the condition of the if statement above it is false. So if press count is not equal to 1, the actions inside the else statement will run. The dot clear function wipes away any color on the LED strip. The dot draw function sends that data to the strip and displays it. And this press count equals zero command sets the value of the press count variable back to zero. So each time the void loop runs, it's going to check the condition of the first if statement, and then check the condition of the second if statement and run either the actions of this if statement or the actions of this else statement. It will never run them both in the same void loop. The code will reach the closing curly brace of the void loop and jump back up to check the reading again from port 6. So the way this program is going to work is if the button is pressed and press count equals 0, press count will now equal 1, and after a delay of 250 milliseconds, the second if condition is true, setting the entire strip to a color value of 100, and skipping the else actions to reach the bottom of the void loop. If you press the button again, then the digital read of port 6 will be low, press count will increase from 1 to 2, 
and after a delay of 250 milliseconds, the code will find that press count doesn't equal 1 anymore, so it will run the code inside the else statement, clearing the strip and resetting press count to 0. So essentially you have one button that can toggle back and forth, turning on or off the entire LED strip.